Ah, uh, you found me. Yes, eight perspectives is what we're looking for in this theory of integral ufology. Number one, the first perspective is the reporter telling the truth. That's the question you need to examine as an evaluator. Number two, you need to discuss what makes you, as an evaluator, believe that. Number three, is the reporter being influenced by their culture and background? And number four, what brought you to that conclusion as an evaluator? Question number five, or perspective number five, can we measure or verify what the reporter claims to have seen with all the ways in which you might be wise in the ways of science? And number six, how wise are you in the ways of science to know that? Perspective number seven, how reliable is the story in terms of having other witnesses? And number eight, what makes you as an evaluator believe or not believe these other witnesses? Or what makes you believe that it might be a hoax? This, in my mind, is a complete report a report that unfortunately no volunteer field investigator has the time or inclination to complete. I, however, did attempt it myself with a simple case in Lincoln that star team members John Powers and Dave Perez investigated, and then again applied this approach to one case example from the work of John Foster, who has documented a number of very complex experiences in his book Eminent Discovery, Available right now, actually, as of yesterday, at Amazon.com, Eminent Discovery, and he has To Earth From Heaven, uh, also can be seen at FosterUFOs.com. I outline both of these uh, things in two white papers. In other words, the results of these two first evaluations using this methodology of integral ufology uh, are documented in two white papers, also available in the project section of our website, which again is www.omahaufostudygroup.com. It did, I promise you, take a heck of a long time, but I did learn a great deal from the exercise, and I'm here to recommend it. To conclude here, let me summarize again the subtitle of this talk, Integral Ufology, Self, Culture, and Nature Perspectives on the UFO ET Phenomena. Because these perspectives are none other than a good summary of the entire history of philosophical and philosophy, essentially discourse, that is, art, morals, and science, what I mean by self is the I, the subjective perspective, the biography of the reporter and their intentions. What I mean by culture is the we, the intersubjective, the background of the reporter. What I mean by nature are the it and its, plural, the scientific and measurable components to report, its being down here, all the ways in which these things interact. This is the I, we, it, and its, or the first person, second person, and third person perspectives on the UFO phenomenon that I hope you can agree we can make room for in the study of alien visitation. This concludes the first half of this presentation. If you can all tolerate my voice or if I haven't put you to sleep by now, stay tuned for part two, which examines in more detail what the evidence to date suggests might be going on in the UFO ET phenomenon. In conclusion, I'd like you to remember our tagline from the radio show, that is the spooky action at a distance radio program on HD radio in the Omaha vicinity or at mavradio.com. Our tagline is, it's not the destination, it's the journey. Special thanks to John Powers, Dave Perez, Kyle Finley, and Matt Judah, my sparring partners on the radio program who allow me to play the role of the trickster now and again. Uh, I'd rather think of myself as a theoretical ufologist. If you'd like to hear some of these heated debates on the radio program as if we were in the same room with you, they are available for free download, again, at www.omahaufostudygroup.com. Thank you for listening, and stay tuned for part two where it really heats up, and I get into the idea of should we be afraid? Should we not be afraid? What does Stephen Hawking have to say? 
Thank you for listening again. Look forward to hearing your comments posted.